Hey everyone, this is Mr. Tanner again, and today we're going to be looking at what is a cycle and more importantly, how do we draw and accurately represent a cycle as a scientific model or drawing. Uh, so without wasting any time, let's go ahead and get started. So a cycle is any process that causes material to move between or within any of the Earth's four spheres. So that material could be an element like carbon. It could be a molecule like water. It could be uh, energy where it's not even a physical thing. We're just looking at energy. So it can be any material or energy, but we just track how is that moving between the four spheres of Earth? And those are the hydrosphere, the geosphere, the atmosphere, and the biosphere. It's also important to keep in mind that during a cycle, matter is not destroyed, nor would be the energy. Matter or energy is not destroyed. These are infinitely, be infinitely recyclable. They can change forms, they can change types, uh, they can change what sphere they're in, but we are never destroying that matter if it's a cycle looking at matter and we're never destroying that energy if it's a cycle that's looking at energy. So now let's take a closer look at those four spheres of Earth that we talked about. So I mentioned the hydrosphere is all of the water on Earth, and that includes things that are dissolved into the water. So if we were to take carbon and dissolve it into water, it's now a part of the hydrosphere. The geosphere is all of the rock and soil on Earth. The biosphere is all life on Earth. So if that carbon moves into something that's living, that carbon's now in the biosphere. And the atmosphere is all of the air on Earth. And often these uh, energy sources or materials like atoms or elements are moving between those four different spheres on Earth. So when it comes to actually drawing a cycle, there's important steps that we need to do. First, you need to make sure everything is labeled clearly. That means two things. I should know what label is where. So you're not just putting the labels in random locations. It's very clear the label, where the label belongs. And then it's also written legibly so I can read it clearly. You need to have arrows showing the direction that the material or energy is going. So if I'm drawing, uh, the carbon cycle and an animal is consuming a carbon source, I need to show that arrow going towards the animal. The carbon is going into the animal. Uh, you also would label what sphere you are in at each step. Again, is that the biosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, or the atmosphere? And then over the arrow, you actually draw the name of the process. So that example I mentioned where an animal is eating a plant, let's say, carbon is entering that animal. So we would draw an arrow going from the plant to the animal, and then we would label that arrow consumption because that's the process of eating is consumption. Let's look at a couple examples. So let's start by looking at an example of the water cycle here. And in the water cycle, we're just going to take a very basic look. It starts with the sun. So we're going to show a process of energy. Essentially, the first step is energy and it goes from the sun to a collection of water. So this is a point of water called collection, like a lake or an ocean or a pond. And this process is solar energy. So when that solar energy reaches the lake, the water is warming up and it's going to increase evaporation. And that evaporation, I'm just gonna draw it as a dotted line to represent that it's now a gas, there's no uh, definite reason for that, but just maybe helps me remember. So an evaporation, again, that's the process. So we put that right next to the arrow here. In evaporation, the water is going from a liquid to a gas. That gas is now less dense, so it rises up into the air. Uh, as the water cools down and loses its heat energy, it turns back into a liquid as little tiny droplets in clouds. And that process is now condensation. 
So condensation is the process of going back into a liquid. And then as those drops get big enough and heavy enough, they can fall down as rain, or they might fall down as little snowflakes, maybe falling on this snow-capped mountain over here. But either way, whether it's snow or rain or sleet or hail, that process is precipitation. And one of the things that I talked about when we draw uh, this precipitation is falling down, evaporation is going up. Uh, I said you should always label the sphere that you're in during a cycle. However, in the water cycle, every single thing is the hydrosphere. We're only looking at water. So we're only dealing with the hydrosphere. So there's how you could draw the water cycle. And we're going to look at one more example here in just a second. The second example that we're going to look at is phases of the moon, which is still a cycle because the phases of the moon repeat over and over. However, we're not going to be looking at what sphere this cycle is happening in because it's not taking place on Earth. This is taking place in space. And as you probably or hopefully recall, the phases of the moon appear to us on Earth because as the moon orbits around the Earth, we can see different portions where from this point of view, we would only see the shadow side of the moon since the sun is lighting the side away from us. And as it continues to orbit around, now we would see the bright side of the moon only, and that's now a full moon. So we get different phases as the moon continues to orbit around the Earth. So let's actually look at those different phases. And we're going to start with our new moon over here on the far right. So the first phase is a new moon. As the new moon moves around, we move to a waxing crescent. And then we go from a waxing crescent to a first quarter. First quarter moon proceeds to a waxing gibbous, a waxing gibbous then moves to a full moon, a full moon then begins to wane or we get more shadow. So we have a waning gibbous, a waning gibbous moves to a third quarter moon, a third quarter moon goes to a waning crescent and then a waning crescent returns back to a new moon. So hopefully this video will help you drawing cycles in the future. We're going to be looking specifically at the rock cycle in this unit with processes of weathering, erosion, deposition, cementation, melting, uh, being deformed. Those are all some processes that we're going to be looking at. And we'll also be looking at the carbon cycle with processes like photosynthesis, respiration, decomposition, dissolving, vaporizing, consumption, and some other processes that I didn't mention as well. But hopefully this set of notes will help you be more successful as we move along. And as always, thanks for watching.